the auto siphon unit for what it does is actually quite complicated. Inside, there are chambers, airlocks and pipes that turn this capsule into quite an interesting unit. Even I don't know how it works. To find out, be sure to keep watching as I create my own pipes and cut the unit in half so that we can see exactly how it works by fitting a Perspex cover. The auto siphon unit with the animation and cutting it in half, you'll learn about how this complicated unit works. And it's quite clever. The auto siphon lives inside the tank above urinals. The tank fills up slowly and when it's full, the flush sequence begins. Seems quite an easy concept, but the auto siphon unit is full of chambers, airlocks and pipes that turns this capsule into a quite interesting unit. In part one, I made my own water tank and did lots of experiments. The water inside the auto siphon unit holds short of the downpipe until the last minute. Then, the designers had to overcome that the tank fills very slowly and is not just a matter of allowing water to trickle over this downpipe until a siphon gets going because it's not going to happen. The pipe is so large that just a few drips going over is not going to start the main siphon. The interesting part is a sudden rise of water which causes an instant flush to get underway. And this is the contraption that I didn't get to examine in part one. And what does this pipe do? This brings me to this video where I exchanged this copper pipe to a transparent tube and melted it slightly so that it would retain the same shape as the original. Then I cut the unit in half. With the Perspex panel in place, we can see exactly what's going on inside, which is what this video is all about. This was the first attempt with two separate cameras filming different angles. But the magic, if you can call it that, happens near the bottom of the auto siphon unit. The camera angles get much better in a moment. And don't forget there is also the animation, all of which is coming up. But what you can see here is the water flowing over the plastic tube. And this is the key element to the activation. Although the Perspex panel is working perfectly, I just cannot get the right camera angle to see it working. What I'm saying is, I need to make some modifications. I've now cut a slot in the front of the tank and sealed the auto siphon unit into it using a glue gun. With the auto siphon unit now sticking out the front of the tank, we can easily see the whole sequence in action. Just watch and see if you can work it out. But it doesn't matter if you can't because I'll explain it all in a moment. Here are the main components inside the auto siphon unit. I must add that this is my own naming scheme for ease of understanding. This is the downpipe that flushes the urinal beneath it. The first stage siphon is the activator using a thin pipe. The second stage air valve starts the main siphon to empty the tank. The main flow pipe is how the tank is emptied. The water trap is required to stop air escaping from within the auto siphon unit. The tank is filled by a continuous trickle of water. Nowadays, this is controlled via a PIR, which turns off the water when the room is not in use. You may think, 
why can't you just connect the PIR to flush your urinals directly? Then you don't need a tank. But you have to bear in mind that the whole concept of the auto siphon dates back to the 1970s and before. Long before, PIRs with solenoid valves were invented. A lot of PIRs were retrofitted to the original tank to save money, as well as water. You'll notice that the water trap is already filled. This is part of the design and I will demonstrate what would happen if the water is not present later on. Water enters the auto siphon unit capsule from the intakes at the bottom. For water to rise within the capsule, the trapped air at the top must be able to escape. Currently, the air is leaving via the first stage siphon and the second stage air valve. Therefore, water continues to enter from the main tank. When the water reaches the first stage siphon, this blocks the air from escaping the capsule via this route. It continues to exit the capsule by the second stage air valve. When this also becomes blocked by the rising water level, air inside the capsule is now trapped. Water in the tank outside continues to rise, against the now static level inside the capsule. This creates a pressure imbalance, and something has to give. Water is pushed up the first stage siphon tube and the second stage air valve. Sometimes rising water in the second stage air valve goes over the top, but you can disregard this as this is not part of the operation. The water in the first stage siphon is the trigger for the whole flush sequence. It doesn't matter how slowly the tank is filling, eventually the water in this small pipe will spill over the top. A small siphon has now started. This starts emptying the second stage air valve and all the compartments around it. Water cannot refill this area quickly enough, as this hole is smaller than the first stage siphon tube. The siphon therefore wins, and this whole area begins draining. As soon as the water level drops below the second stage air valve, air inside the capsule can now escape once again. As air now escapes the top of the capsule, water comes in from the main tank to replace it. The water level in the capsule now rises quickly. So does the water that was once holding short of the main flow pipe. Water instantly drops down the main flow pipe, overflows the water trap with enough volume that the main siphon is instantly created. As more and more air escapes from the capsule, the water level within the capsule eventually floods the whole area, sealing all exits. This has no consequence at all, as the main siphon is already well underway. When the main tank is empty, air enters around the bottom of the capsule, which empties the unit and the whole process starts all over again. The only thing that I've not added to this animation is this small pipe. This is designed to help clear the capsule during the final stages of emptying, so that you don't end up in this situation. The leftover water from within the capsule has drained into the main tank, rising the water level just enough that the air intakes are blocked, preventing the capsule from emptying properly. This pipe, mounted slightly higher than the inlets, allows air in to clear down any remaining water. You'll notice that the water in the water trap is retained. Here is what would happen if this water is absent. This situation is also mentioned on the side of the capsule for the installer. No water in the water trap means that air can escape the capsule, and the first phase siphon and the second stage air valve cannot control it. This means that the water level does not stop short, and the water overflows into the main flow pipe. This water starts filling up the water trap, which eventually seals the air from escaping, and normal functionality is resumed. What happens if things go wrong? and some of this stuff were to break off and enter the unit. Will the tank overflow? I did some further experiments. I blocked the first stage siphon with a glue gun and then the second stage air valve and then I blocked both at the same time. This stopped the sudden rise of water that starts the main siphon. Instead, the pressure on the outside of the capsule pushes the remaining air into the water trap the water level inside the capsule is then designed to overflow into the main flow pipe. But if the water entering the tank is slow enough, then the siphon never gets started. You'll end up with the same amount of water entering the tank going into the flow pipe. If the water in the tank goes high enough, then perhaps this will push enough water into the main flow pipe and the main siphon may get going.
Unless the pipe down to the urinal becomes blocked, there is not much chance the main tank will overflow. The Mr. Matt and Mr. Che channel is all about quality, not quantity. Please click the playlist in the top left hand corner. This contains the best videos from our channel. If you've enjoyed watching, please consider subscribing to the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che channel. You can also see part one in the top right corner, where I also explain my phobia of water tanks. Thank you very much for watching.